Okay, just a quick video on where I'm at with the Sindon light gun. I've had mine for about a week now and played about with it and it works really well, really impressed with it. It's a great bit of kit. Obviously it's um, it's big selling point is you can have a light gun without having to have an old style CRT TV. It doesn't need that technology, it works differently. So this is um, the gun I've got. I've got a, a recoil version, so this sort of extra functionality here. I've not used that blade to be honest though because it works fine without it and it is quite loud, so late at night you might not want it making that noise. But anyway, there's a recoil and non-recoil and you, as you can see on the box, there are options for uh, blue, red, black, recoil or not, um, orange tip, I think, yeah, the blue ones come with orange tip, the other ones don't, and uh, quality control pass, which is good. And uh, so this feels solid and it is solid, it's uh, good quality, it um, really feels durable, it's gonna last. You can see the screws all in one side, and I think I've seen videos where people have taken them apart for a few mods, but I probably won't be doing that, I'll just keep it standard. Um, in terms of what you can do or what you can feed back to the um, RetroPie or whatever system you're using with, the inputs it's got is a trigger, obviously. That would be good to a given button. Um, all the buttons map to a given keyboard button, and you can change that configuration as well. So it is quite configurable from a config file side of things. But yeah, in terms of the inputs, you've got trigger, and this triggers the, the actual um, sort of reload function, triggers a button as well. But I think it's the same as one of these. But anyway, yeah, that was one. You've got two buttons there, and you've got two buttons on the other side. So four in total there, plus a D pad. And again, you can map that to whatever. So that's all of the, the inputs that you can get. So any given game can have um, four buttons, D-pad and trigger. And I don't tend to use that bit. Um, in terms of the um, sort of general feel of it, it's well weighted, you know, it's not too light. It doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. It does feel really durable. You've got the camera that uses um, over here. And largely that's all there is to it as far as the user is concerned. You know, you just need something that, that works and feeds back these signals to the, the Pi or whatever it might be. So I've had it plugged into this and had loads of games going. I've been trying to work out the best way to configure RetroPie so it's happy with gun games and non-gun games at the same time, so a mixed mode build, which I'll go into in a minute, but it seems quite happy with it. Um, but in terms of the light gun, the, the cable it comes with is pretty long as well, so you can stand quite a distance away, which I'll show in a minute. It's about, I think it's about four and a half meters. And it's just a standard USB end, so if I can find the end. There we go. Standard USB, so it just goes in one of the ports in the pipe or whatever you're using, you know, in your PC if that's what you're gonna to use to, to run the um, gun. You can get two players at once, so it doesn't have to be a one player um, setup. I've only got one gun, I've not got two configured, but you can you know buy two, run them both at the same time, they're quite happy running together. Takes a little bit more config, but not much, so it's worth looking at if you want two player games running well. But there it is, that's the, the physical gun. So, what I'll do next, I'll go to some screen sharing and show how it looks um, when it's on, up on the TV, and then I'll show you some sort of games in action. Okay, here we are booting up into a track mode. Um, this will all work with emulation station as well, which I'll show you in a minute. But uh, this is what I've been using to sort of configure at the moment. Obviously the front end is wholly separate to the emulators that run underneath it, but um, I've just been playing around with this at the moment. So what I've done, I've taken stock RetroPie, so 4.8.1 at the minute, um, updated the binaries through RetroPie, so it would be whatever binaries are supported by RetroPie as of June 2nd, uh, 2022. So they're in that state. Um, RetroPie is like a 4.8, I'm running on Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, RetroArch is 1.10, I think, but I'll run through and check that in a second. So what I've got here is fairly stock RetroPie build with um, gun games and non-gun games. So for the gun games, all it is really is an override for the ROM uh, for RetroArch and an override for the ROM for the core. 
um, the other ones. So anything else that you put on there that isn't a gun game, we'll just pick up the defaults. So if you've changed your defaults, it'll pick those up. Um, if you change them in the future, it'll pick those up. So just like normal RetroPie setup, really. So in a track mode, um, actually one thing I've done is set the gun. So I'll just check that is okay so i've got the controls in here that the gun should work so if i start the gun up um port so um i guess i should try a test first let's give a test a go if i open that that should bring up the test screen and as long as i've plugged this in hopefully i have you should see and uh, there we go that moves so if i hold down the left d-pad it should there we go yeah so that's testing move to bottom right finish this right okay so now let's start the gun up and if i've done that right a track mode should let me yeah there we go so i'm using the gun to navigate here just using the d-pads and then for select and unselect that's all the buttons i've configured on the gun really because i don't need the other options so if i press back it should go yeah do you want to exit i press the other front button that i've mapped to no um and yeah, these are just obviously a standard setups that you get with RetroPie. The ports are part of the Sinden install package. So you run a couple of scripts to install it. Um, I've left the defaults. You can add other configs in there. So for example, if I've got, got recoil gun, I could set the config for recoil specific. These are just the defaults. I haven't played about with them. Um, but if I go to the first set of games, I've just configured PlayStation and arcade with fb neo at the minute so i um, haven't done them all and i'm doing each specific game so it's taken a while but i've got a couple for a bit of a demo anyway and um, push that on the arrow so okay so we've got playstation here so i've got time crisis and i can press up on the d-pad there we go crash bandicoot which is obviously not a gun game um and then time crisis project time so if i um start with time crisis that should just work okay so i'll just press start on the gun which is that one there we go i haven't put a loading screen up or taken the wrong command off it's just kind of as it is at the minute and what i should see is okay so it's picked up you see in the bottom left there it popped up with configuration um override and when we do the non-gun games you won't get that because it's just picking up default okay so let's just aim and shoot make sure it's playing ball yep seems okay then I press a uh, button on the gun. There we go. And I'll just give it a quick go to show you how it looks. And because it's a good game, it won't look particularly exciting on this because all you're going to see is a bit of a um, sort of flash or cursor where I shoot, but I'll do it properly. Um, so you can see me sort of literally playing it later. Um, okay, press any button, press any button. I don't know um, other people want to use the gun whether you ever use the crosshairs in sight or you just kind of play it by ear. I think it's easier not looking down the sight all the time. There. Um, I've got a shader on this as well, so there's a bit of a scanline effect. Obviously that's just personal preference, you can change that. And I'll, you can see I've got the um, overlay around the side. And if you don't know, the white bar is required for Cinder to work properly. Okay. Uh, the Cinder light gun to work properly. So that's why the white and um, borders there if you weren't sure. Um, what else? It's, yeah, you can see my cursor flashing on the screen and I'll probably quit in a minute because you get the idea. Do with aiming better. Um, yeah, what else? So I think that's that's pretty much it on this. It's just got the override. So um, I was going to say RetroPie, but RetroArch knows how to map um, the button presses I've got on the gun to um, something it understands. So that's what the config does there. I'm just going to see if I can get that bloke who comes up there. Yeah, going with that and getting me. That makes a change. Um, right, yeah, that's it. I'm quitting, so that's time crisis. Um, so now, if we go to non gun game, there, so let's start that. And I've got a controller plugged in as well. 
And you see in the bottom left, you won't get the override popping up. And the pop-ups on the left, you can always configure to not see them, but it's useful when you're trying to work stuff out. Um, okay, so we've got Crash Bandicoot. This has got an any PlayStation game you stick on here will have that standard um, bezel of a PlayStation because that's sort of just set with the default um, as well as the shader there. And it now retroarch will have a clear about the gun even though it's sort of plugged in or it won't know how to map any of the buttons because um, it doesn't need to. And I don't want to have a load of gun config in my non gone non-gun games, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so this is Crash Bandicoot, which I'm sure you can imagine, but I'll just start it to make sure it works. There we go. These are, I mean, not that it makes any difference, but these PlayStation games are all CHD format, just to save a bit of space. It doesn't make any odds to the config, so I've just run with that. Jump, spin, jump, spin. Ooh. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, quite happy oh, um, running on the setup with RetroPie, not picking up any sort of gun related um, config data. So you can put your extra ROMs on here and, um, and run with that. And what I might do, if um, anyone's interested, just build an image of this so you can see. Um, how the config set up and just put your own ROMs in it because I could keep the scraped data I could scrape all the gun based games take the ROMs off obviously or just copy all the config files because then you just drop it into a standard um, RetroArch install and if I go to RetroArch now actually um, here so you've got the menu um, as per normal if I go back I'm trying to think where um, I'm off in the RetroArch menus I don't know where I'm going information System information there. So in the bottom left, it says 1.10.0. So that's the RetroArch version. And then you've got I'm using PCSX RAM for PlayStation, which is R23, which I think is March this year or something. Looking at that GitHub, so it's a relatively new binary build, um, and that's all just running here. You can see that it's got um, it can it can see my controller, um, not the gun at the minute, um, which is what I need. And besides that, it's just RetroArch as you'd normally have in RetroPy. It's just stock, really, um, as are the RetroArch configs. Um, like I say, the gun ones are just overrides. They don't affect the standard ones. Um, yeah, that's it, really. So let's quit that. Um, so we've seen a gun game, a non-gun game. Um, and the other one I put on here is a couple of arcade games. So if I scroll to wherever the arcade games are, here. So I've got Point Blank, um, Alien, Alien 3, and Dig Dug for a non-example. So if we give um, Point Blank a go, I think I've configured this one up. Ooh, pick up the gun. Okay, it's using FB Neo. So the, the config as well for game specific games. Once you've worked out the settings for one core, the rest of the games aren't too bad. It's just getting the right config for that core. Um, for example, like some like call it a light gun, some call it a gun con, some would be something else. It's got different references. Some of them want different buttons mapped a different way. But yeah, once you've done it for one core, the rest are pretty simple. Okay, so um, point blank. So credit should be that one. Yeah, there we go. And start is that. Let's see if that works. I'll have um, this one. Twenty five seconds, unlimited bullets, okay. Oh, nearly. Oh, sorry. Ah, oh. I mean, it should just stay in the rings. Oh, that's bad, Amy. Ah, oh, not good. I get 25? Oh, 16. Yeah, 17. There we go. Not bad. Um, yeah, it works. So, again, we've got the game specific um, config that includes the specific overlay. So, you've got the, the black sides that would otherwise be there with the um, bezel kind of figure there. 
you've got the white border because you need the white border. Um, yeah, that's point blank. So now if we go and play um, a not, so this one, Dig Dug, I haven't put any sort of bezel at all. I've just put the ROM there basically. So this is what it would do if you just put a ROM um, on there. See, there's no um, shader, there's no overlay. It's just running it um, as per the standard configs. So yeah, if you said change your standard configs to always run a certain shader, then this one would pick it up. Um, I'm using the controller now, I've just swapped over to, to do that and you can see that it's running as you'd expect really. Um, so, you know, in short, RetroPie seems quite happy in being able to chop and change. Well, I suppose really it's more RetroArch is quite happy chopping and changing between configs when you've got a gun um, plugged in and it's um, just using those to make sure that... Can I push that on his head? No. Uh, to make sure it works. And that's probably it. Um, yeah, so um, using RetroPie, updated to the latest version is 4.8.1. Um, oh yeah, Emulation Station. Now you can, on this um, build that I've put here, bah, 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 and uh, track mode, I can launch Emulation Station here, but because the video capture will have a bit of a moment when it stops and reboots, if I do it manually, so exit, start, Emulation Station, it should just be exactly the same setup. Obviously both front ends use the same config, so it doesn't really make any odds, but they both work quite happily. So again, ports, you can start your gun, stop your gun and anything else. Um, PlayStation, you've got the same games that are running the same way. And uh, that's the standard retro pie um, settings. And arcade games that we looked at a minute ago as well. So um, it's good in that environment as well. Uh, but yeah, what I'll do is probably just crack on and try and configure a lot more gun games. Because, let's say with Super Nintendo for example, there's, I don't know, about a thousand games. Light gun games, there's only about, I guess here, about ten. So, to put ten overrides in isn't that much effort, you know, and then you leave your other 990 games just to pick up your default settings and however you want to configure that. It's just have the overrides for the, the handful of um, light gun related games. So once you've configured that, you know, that's it. It's a one-time thing. And it'll always pick those up. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, if you've got any questions, let me know, and I'll stick in some actual gameplay um, now. In track mode, I've uh, got the gun, got it set up, so we navigate to um, PlayStation, let's give time process a go. And start. Okay. I think um, with the gun as well, because of the camera, you've got to get the lighting um, best for it. If it's too bright, it's not very happy. And, I think you can sort of configure it a bit there to make sure you get make more accurate um, tracking. So that's worth playing about with as well. This room struggles a bit because I've got two different areas of light and then there's not a lot of it and I've got to do it. Anyway, point is, uh, let's play time process. <laughs> okay. Hopefully I can get past that first stage. There's a bit of kidnapping.
best there, but, but there you go. Um, time crisis on Raspberry Pi.